So I'm here to talk to you today about metadata, which is something that I really like to talk about. Um, Noah said something sort of disparaging this morning in uh, ebook craft about if you wandered into the wrong room and people were talking about metadata, then you would know that you should run away. Um, so I'm hoping that I'm watching the door right now. So if anybody leaves, I'm going to take it personally. Uh, so I'm here to talk to you today specifically about uh, BiblioShare and formatting your metadata to input into BiblioShare. Uh, so for those of you who haven't had too much exposure to BiblioShare yet, it is uh, a wonderful program that BookNet has created that um, is a quality controlled aggregation system and it disseminates bibliographic data across the industry. So it helps publishers and distributors to create quality Onyx files, and then it facilitates sharing those Onyx files along with cover images and position files uh, by serving as sort of a central repository for metadata uh, in the industry for all books that are available. So BiblioShare is used by retailers, by publishers, by librarians and the media, and then it also feeds data into websites, blogs, uh, point of sale systems, and integrated library systems all across the country. Um, BiblioShare is integrated with a few of BookNet's other uh, programs. One of them is Catalyst, uh, which we've talked about extensively already today. So BiblioShare metadata and cover images are fed into, Cat into Catalyst to make the digital catalogs. Um, cover images are also sent from BiblioShare to their sales data program. And all titles on the 49th shelf site are listed using BiblioShare files. And BiblioShare uh, is also, of course, developed in accordance with BookNet's uh, standards and certificate programs. Um, so it really is sort of a hub for all of uh, for BookNet's different programs. So why do we need good metadata? Uh, the short answer is really that there are so many books out there now. Um, as you know from looking at Amazon or Kobo sites, there are just so many books that are available to consumers right now that it's really important to make sure that if a, a customer is looking for your book that they're able to find it, or if they're looking for a specific type of book and your book is one of those, that it comes up in the search results. Um, also, metadata is now being viewed by consumers as well as people in the industry, and so you really wanna make sure that you're sort of putting your best foot forward uh, with your metadata and providing coherent, uh, robust data to customers. Um, and the format that we use for metadata, of course, is Onyx. Uh, Onyx is an XML-based standard for sharing bibliographic data. Uh, it's used for both print and digital books. Um, and a little information about Onyx. Onyx is a product-based record. So what that means is that each version of a book, so the print book, the PDF, the EPUB, is considered a different product. And each product needs its own ISBN. And then each of those ISBNs, in turn, needs its own Onyx feed and BiblioShare entry. So if you're creating a book in print and EPUB and PDF, um, you could be creating four or five different entries for each book, which is a lot of metadata to have to generate. Um, and unfortunately, we are not at the dream yet of having one metadata file that you can use for all of those different formats. Um, but there are ways that you can sort of simplify the process of creating all those different metadata entries. Um, and I would propose that the best way to do that would be to create all of your different product feeds at the same time. Um, so there's different ways that you could be storing your metadata. Uh, you may have an internal content management system at your publishing house or place of work. Uh, you may be using an XML file, which would be great. Or you may just be using an Excel spreadsheet, and that's fine too. Um, but the key, I think, is just to make sure that you're sort of creating all of that data in one central place. Um, there's a lot of talk right now in EPUB production about this sort of dream of having a single uh, book file that you can use to sort of take as long or uh, for as long down the production pipeline as possible before you have to sort of fork off to do the tweaks that are necessary to make a book into an EPUB or a PDF file. Um, and I would propose that we do sort of the same thing with metadata. So even though we can't have just one metadata feed that works for all these different formats, 
Um, you want to start with the intrinsic data, which is the things that are related directly to the content of the book. So the title, the description, the author name. Keep all those things in one place and make sure that when you're creating your metadata for different formats that you're using those same um, data points for the different formats. Um, most of that data tends to be created pre-publication um, and any changes that happen happen before the book is published. And so for all of those things, you can sort of keep them all in one spreadsheet or in one entry in your content management system. And then post-publication, it's mostly the extrinsic data that will end up changing. So things like prices, sales rights, release dates, reviews. And those changes do tend to happen more on a specific product level. Um, and so you can sort of make those updates as you go. Uh, the most important thing, though, is to keep everybody on the same page. Uh, so I've got a screenshot here of um, Annabelle on the 49th shelf, and I was kind of laughing. <laughs> Amanda and I clearly did not uh, converse about which books we were going to use as our examples. Um, I've got Canada Reads on the brain, apparently. Uh, so as you can see here, I put a circle around the options where it says buy this book at. And there's a few different options there, so you could go to one of the... Uh, online retailers, you could get put out to an indie store. Um, but the reason that I wanted to sort of show this is to illustrate that within a few seconds, a customer could be looking at the metadata for your book on the Kobo site, and then they might flip over to Kindle. And you really want that data to be consistent across those different places so that the customer sort of gets the feeling that no matter what format they decide to buy this book in, it's going to be the same quality product and it's going to, you know, contain the same content. Um, you should think of your metadata as sort of a living document. So if your book gets a good review, even better if it gets a review in the New York Times, uh, if you put out a new edition, uh, if you create the book in a new format, or if it wins an award, that's not an actual book award um, that's up there. It's one that I made. Maybe I will start handing it out. Um, but you want to make sure that you're adding those things to the metadata and that you're adding it across all of the different formats. Because if somebody's looking at the book on um, the Amazon site and looking at the print version and then they want to look at the Kindle, you want to make sure that that same information is there right across the board. Um, another thing that you'll want to do on an ongoing basis is to keep active, uh, keep your lists of titles and their status active. Uh, so as your titles um, come up to their print date, uh, you can laugh, it was supposed to be a joke. <laughs> I see a few people reading my, my book titles there. Um, so as these, as title status changes, send that to BiblioShare, input it, and I would recommend that you send those kinds of um, updates as they happen, and then every few months do a full catalog update as well, just to make sure that everything is up to date and all of your different formats have been updated properly. Um, so the next thing I wanted to talk about was ways that you can use your data to enable users. And as I mentioned earlier, there are so many books that are up on all of these sites now that you really want to make sure that your book is one that comes up when, you, when a, a reader is browsing a site or looking for your specific title. Um, so this, for example, this uh, sort of trope that is often used, I find more in board games, but sometimes you see it in books too of saying, this book is for everybody from ages 9 to 99. It's kind of a fun idea, and, and yes, maybe adults would also enjoy the Adventurous Boys Handbook. Um, but if I'm the mother of a 10-year-old and I'm looking for a specific book, that's not really helpful information to me. And if I'm a 40-year-old looking for books about camping, then I probably don't want to buy this book. So the point is sort of that there is a targeted age range that I imagine the publisher for this book had in mind. Um, and it, I think it would serve them better to actually input that data than to sort of put these all-encompassing things um, because curation is becoming so much more important as uh, the number of books that is out there expands. Uh, make sure that you're using your related ISBNs. So if you, re if you released a book in print and you put it into a BiblioShare, and then a few months later you create a digital version, make sure you're going back to the print record and inputting 
the uh, ISBN for the new digital version so that if someone's looking somewhere like 49th Shelf, they can see I could buy this book in paperback, but I could also buy it in ebook format or in hardcover if I want to. Uh, and you want to just make sure that readers know that those options are out there. Um, another thing to make sure that you're inputting into the metadata is uh, as many BISAC codes as you can, really. Uh, one of the great things about selling books on the internet is that you can put your book on multiple shelves. Uh, so I've got a screenshot here of a Coach House title, and um, I'm not sure, oh yeah, it's pretty big, you can probably read it, but they've got the book in um, Social and Cultural Studies, Art and Architecture, and Travel. And so if anybody is searching by genre for each of those three sections, this book will come up in all those places. And this is a really great way to give your book a bit more visibility across different platforms just by adding a bit more information into your metadata. Okay, so this is the most important thing and I saved it for closer to the end. You need to keep the ISBNs for different formats separate. Um, and the reason that this is important is that each uh, metadata upload that goes into BiblioShare will completely replace what was there before. Um, and this, this kind of seemed like a better analogy in my head, and then when I was looking at it earlier, I was like, I don't know if this really makes sense. But my thinking here was that uh, if you were going around town and putting up posters for a lost cat or an event, uh, and you know, you spent a whole day going around and stapling things to a telephone pole, uh, and then realize that you hadn't got the information right or maybe you wanted to make a tweak. There was no way that you could uh, edit the, the signs that are already out there in the world. You would have to go up and put up an entirely new poster. And that's the way that Onyx Feeds work in BiblioShare. It's like every time you're putting up an entirely new poster. Um, so the reason that it's important to keep those ISBNs for different formats separate is that if you uploaded a uh, entry into BiblioShare and said that ISBN was for the print version of a book, and then a few months later you uploaded metadata that said that that same ISBN was for the digital version of the book, the print version that was there before would disappear. And so that, may, that causes all sorts of problems. Um, people may not be able to find it in BiblioShare, or Catalyst, or 49th Shelf. Um, libraries may think that they already have it if they are just searching by ISBN, when in case they may have the print, but not the digital. And in that case, you'd be losing the sale on the digital version. Um, so that is really a key thing. Keep those ISBNs separate. Uh, ISBNs are free in Canada, so there's really no reason not to do it. Um, in the States, you have to pay for them, but we have the unique um, privilege here of getting free ISBNs from Libraries and Archives Canada. So make sure that you're assigning different uh, ISBNs for each of the product formats. Um, BiblioShare is in a constant state of evolution and improvement. Uh, Tim's been doing presentations shortly about some exciting new things that are coming up with BiblioShare. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, um, the BookNet staff have told me that they are happy to answer them. So I've put the uh, email address for the BiblioShare team up there, uh, and then my own email address as well if you have any questions for me specifically. Does anybody have uh, any questions right now about BiblioShare or metadata? <laughs> Such an exciting topic, you're just all <laughs> taking it in. Okay, thanks. <laughs>